book nerds i'm aubrey and i'm peyton and today we are going to be rapid fire going through all of the books we've read so far in 2023 so join us with a cup of coffee as we dive between these paper sheets okay so we are starting with moi these books i read rapid fire at the end of last year but finished in january you were so quick I was so quick for the length <laughs> of books. I am very proud of myself. That is yes, none yes. other than Sarah J. Mass's House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath. Oh, uh, the Crescent Cities. Yes. So this was like number one for 2022, I think, on Goodreads. 2020. Yeah, two for yeah. Goodreads, I believe, mm-hmm. when we did that video. So like, wow. And these are hunkin' big books. Um. Yeah, so we know Sarah J. Mass, of course, if you watch our videos, I mean, how could you not know Sarah J. Mass? These books were so good. I will say the first one feels like reading a textbook for a little bit there. Big learning curve. (laughs) Big learning curve. Um, It takes place in an urban fantasy world with your main character, Bryce Quinlan, and she goes through a lot of shit. And I mean, these books are big, so... All Mm -hmm. I can say is just go along for the ride. The ending of House of Sky and Breath basically broke book talk. Um, (laughs) So that's all you need to know. This for me is like a four out of five. This for me would be like a four and a half, five out of five. Only because I feel like some of it could have been cut out. But, you know, because she's they're pretty girthy. (laughs) But yes. Good books. Highly, highly recommend you read them. Uh, I read those as well, and I think I ranked them just a little bit lower. I was It's a slow cr- climb, and it is a mystery plot, which I was not prepared to get into. So just know when you're getting in that it is a mystery urban fantasy book. <laughs> this ain't no book at all. The first book I finished of the year I had actually started another book because you're gonna be like Aubrey that book came out at the end of January how is that the first book because I put I put one on pause um but the first book I finished of the year was Chain of Thorns by my lord and savior Cassandra Clare okay I I am obsessed with the Shadowhunter series I am obsessed with Cassandra Clare's writing if you get to the later books her like it's just it's so good and this is no exception this is the third book in the trilogy uh what is it called the last hours trilogy um and so if you have read the infernal devices this is actually the story of the children of your favorites from the infernal devices uh it is so amazing we follow our main character cordelia um, and then there's also James and Lily and Christopher and Thomas and Alistar. And there, there are so many good characters. If you have read a Shadowhunter book, I can't give you much about the plot because it's the third book and I don't want to spoil the first two. But it is a period piece. It is beautiful. This is a five star read. I will say it is a five star fantasy read and I loved it. This is like a four and a half Cassandra Clare read, like if I'm just ranking her books, because a big hunkin' chunk of this book is like kind of like the war epic battle, you know, like an ending to a good fantasy trilogy has. But it's like it's like half the book. And I was like, okay, let's let's move on. But you have to you have to know these characters. I was squealing during the first half of the book. There's like it's so juicy it's so good must read all right so next on my list i don't have it because i actually <laughs> lent it to my mother Aww. it's called, it's called Uva, and if you're also a film nerd tom hanks they it's it's a book based in either norway or sweden so yeah. it's been a, it's been translated into english but Tom Hanks and his wife took it, and A Man Called Otto came out this year, which I have yet to watch because I'm waiting for my boyfriend because I think he will really <laughs> like it. But oh my gosh, so this book follows an old man called Uva, and basically he is this depressed, grumpy old man, and Aww. he is trying to, the whole book to find ways on how to kill himself because he misses 
his wife who died and a new neighbor comes into his life as well as a fluffy little cat that you will see on the front cover if you ever look at it and kind of shows him the beauty of life and it is such a warming book to you know it's the grieving process and getting old in a world that's constantly changing and innovating itself and you know losing a loved one and so wow this book is super heavy such a good read <laughs> it's definitely one i think that will be seen in classrooms a couple yeah. years from now so if one day your kids come home and say i'm reading a man called uva i'd be like oh my gosh i remember that book <laughs> podcast <laughs> okay you talked about it it's not necessarily a book we never really talk about on this podcast but i love yeah. those little those little like heart-wrenching books this book mm -hmm. for me was a four out of five I read it relatively fast and I think Tom Hanks adaptation of it, like I think Tom Hanks was the perfect person to play Uva and I'm very, very excited to watch it. Um, okay, the next thing I have is another thing that we will never talk about on the podcast. Um, I read two poetry books this year and I did read them for school but I'm gonna talk about them anyways because you know what they're books they're on my goodreads and they're going towards my goodreads count so you know what you got girl gotta do what a girl's gotta do um I read Life on Mars by Tracy K Smith this is a Pulitzer Prize winner book um and then I also read Bright Dead Things by Ada Lamon oh my gosh okay let's just say obviously these are poetry books um and so there's not like like a plot but like things about them this one if you like space and stars like you honestly could like this as a poetry book i know poetry is not everyone's thing but like you'll be reading this and you'll be like how did she ever come up with that it deals with such important things it is very like upper level where like there's a lot of references to 80s culture as well, which I don't know a ton about. Um, but it was it was a good read. Um, and then we also have Bright Dead Things. Uh, Ada does such an amazing job. Uh, she, my professor was also like obsessed with her. It was always talking about how pretty she was and had met her, which is so fun. Um, but it deals a lot with like more like emotions that I could relate to there's so many lines where I'm like highlighting um and just like such like cute like not not cute not cute actually this is pretty depressing uh but it's her talking about her life and I would definitely I don't know I don't know if I would fully recommend either one of these if you're a poetry person then yes I would say that if you're not super into poetry and you want to get into poetry I think that there's uh, more modern writers out there. I mean, obviously both of these are modern books, but I think that there's ones that are like, kind of like punchier Instagram poems out there. Yeah. And there's some big boy poems in here. But <laughs> I would rate uh, Life on Mars as like a three and a half out of five if I did half stars, um, just because I was a little too dumb to read it. Um, and then White Dead Things, I would do a four out of five with the obviously like these are poetry books yes life on mars has been like on my radar for quite some time so yeah we'll see if I can jump into that yeah <laughs> all right so moving on this was a fun beginning of the year for me because i read a light in the flame by jennifer l armstrong this is her second book in sarah's story which is the prequels to the front from blood and ash I'm a sucker um, for the prequels yeah and if you know anything about me i am a i stand the prequels they are my favorite yes, yes. sarah is i don't know because there's another girl on this and on this list that i've really gotten a liking to but um she is one of my favorite female leads i love mm -hmm. her Yes. This book, it's the second in the series, and it's, I, there's not much I can say, but mm -hmm. this, I would highly recommend you read them. Um, I'm sure you've heard of them. JLA is, like, popping off this past year and a half as an author. I'm very excited to see the next books come out within the next year. This book, for me, ah, it's... 
it wasn't as good as the first one. The first one was definitely a five out of five for me. I would I would do a three and a half four for this book. Oh, I love um, it. you this yeah I I didn't necessarily love how it ended. Um, but yeah. I I'll give it a four. I'll give a four out of mm-hmm. five. As Aubrey said, for I believe Chain of Thorns, like there's not much I can get into. Yeah. It's it, but, but it's the second of the book series. It's good. Sarah is a badass, and if you want some romanticy in your life, read good it. romance, like and like yes. mature adult romance. Yes, and he's super badass, and there's you know fantasy powers involved and pol like politics, which I love. So yes, we'll do four and five. Light in the flame was great. Looking forward <laughs> to reading more of the series. Ah. <sighs> Okay, the opposite of romanticy for a bit. Um, I read Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This is what I started in January, and then I had to pause to read um, some other things because my girl, my boy, is beefy. If you do not know who Brandon Sanderson is, he is one of the biggest fantasy authors of our time. He recently did a Kickstarter, which is going to change the publishing industry. And Words of Radiance is the second book in what is going to be his career staple series, The Stormlight Archive. Brandon Sanderson writes intense, amazing, epic fantasy books, and he writes the beefiest books you've ever seen. This is a small like book, and the font size is tiny. Yeah. The word counts of these books are over 400,000. Now, just to let you know, most like romance novels are like 60,000 words. Like this is like four books in it. This is like two or three beefy fantasy books. This is a lot. Um, and I'm obsessed with it. There's not a lot that I can say about a second book, but the Stormlight Archive in general is going to be like, like I said, a masterpiece, a classic. If you are into fantasy, you really should read these. They are a lot to get into. The world building is intense, but I promise it pays off. There is just, there's so many good things in this series and you know it's going to be so, so epic. Um, that I, I really would, I feel like to be a fantasy reader at some point, you gotta, you gotta pick up this Brandon Sanderson Mm -hmm. book. (laughs) And and if not this one, one of his. Um, oh, I would totally, five out of five. This is a five out of five read. It's, she's big, it's four books, but this is a five star read you need. And the, the magic kicks up. Yes. I mean, just look behind Aubrey's head. Look at all those Brandon yes. Sandersons behind her. They're huge. It's daunting. <laughs> I have a friend, Logan, who's obsessed with Brandon Sanderson. He's reading the Mistborn. Mistborn. Series? That's what I'm currently reading. Yes. yes. That's the so that's, that's the series you should start with for yes. Brandon Sanderson. Don't do what I did because I'm a little crazy. Um, but you should get to it at some point. Peyton will have to at some point. Yeah, I know. She's going to be like, you can't be my friend anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think he's like a modern day Tolkien and I have so much respect for him. And I think he is just going to be a, he already is. He is like, just going to be that famous fantasy writer. And then yeah. Aubrey's going to be like teaching a masterclass one day about Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> All right. So similar to how Aubrey had her poetry books because she's a creative writing minor i have a minor in german of all things (laughs) um so i took a holocaust memoirs class this past semester it changed my life i had so much fun doing it and one of the books that we read was still alive by ruth kluger this story is about she's basically an exception to the rule of she was a young girl who was living in austria and she went to Auschwitz and but she lied about her age and that is the one of the reasons mm. why she survived. Um this book is not like other memoirs that I've read about the Holocaust. What's different is she's like it kind of feels like you're reading her diary and she doesn't go really like and frank with it. It's super like real and honest and she talks about mm. like how her mom and her like fought like real mother-daughter relationships while they were there. 
it dives into just kind of like her whole story. I like how the book is separated. I like how she talks about her life before the Holocaust, during the after Holocaust, and then after the Holocaust. Because oh, I that's feel like a lot of times, if you read Holocaust memoirs, they dive really into like the gritty nitty of like the camps. And I think what I really liked about this book is Ruth was super honest about everything, even, mm-hmm. you know, 20 years past the Holocaust she was talking about. Um, so she's an interesting lady. My professor got to meet her. And so it's just such a, such a cool moment. I really recommend this book, weirdly. Um, I never thought I'd be like, recommending a holocaust uh memoir on my podcast um but here we are (laughs) Ruth Kluger's story is so 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 cool and it's translated into English for all of us to enjoy um this is a for a holocaust memoir and I've read a lot this is a five out of five book for me I really did consume this book at short learn a little bit about the history Mm -hmm. um and yeah so I definitely recommend still alive all right what i have next is the viscount who loved me this is a bridgerton book these are such fun reads if you have not watched the tv show i would recommend watching the tv show as well um they are just like like just it's camp it's regency era romance it is beautiful it is short it is there's such witty fun banter going on i will say if you have watched the tv show first uh shanaland did amazing things with the story and with diversity um this does not have kate sharma as kate sharma is in the tv show Uh, (laughs) but i would still recommend it it is a, a cute fun read like honestly this is a this is a five out of five romance for me i love the witty banner i love regency era when it's like he touched her arm like oh my goodness and they have like all this social etiquette you know it's just it's so it's such it's a you just smile you just smile and love it (laughs) this is a great like um palette cleanser between epic fantasy books um so yeah i would recommend it it's fun to go back to like no like let's strip away all the war and the dragons and let's just talk about love and bridgerton does that so well i've recently yes. been obsessed and i've watched all of the new stuff so yes i'm very excited to possibly read more of those you know join the wagon and read some this year <laughs> Okay, so this next one, Aubrey and I can talk about together because we yes. did a podcast about it. So you should go yes. watch it. We're, we'll be quick because you can just go watch the podcast. Um, yes, that is the, the Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This was a book talk pick that we chose to read together for the yeah. pod. And Aubrey, I was like on the border. I really liked it and I would like to read them all. But Aubrey loved these books. I did. I, I, so we went into Barnes and Noble completely blind. We just picked a random book. Uh, you can see about that there. Uh, but this is a YA fantasy. And I actually have a friend on TikTok who like a year and a half ago kept asking me to read this. She was like, oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. And I just never did because I'm a slow reader and I had other things going on. But I did. I love this. I mean, no, it's a YA mystery. Again, this is not, I rated this five stars and I talked about it in our podcast episode and I will talk about it now. Like this is not a adult fantasy five star, but this is a YA mystery five stars. I thought the pacing was awesome. I thought Avery, the main character, uh, yeah, sorry, plot. I didn't even do plot for Bridgerton. You know what, Bridgerton, it, it's a romance. Um, <laughs> This book uh, follows Avery, who uh, inherits a fortune, um, and then she has to like move out to the Hawthorne mansion. Uh, she has suddenly come into this fortune. She did not know or did not think she knew. It's a mystery of trying to figure out why the money was given to her and not the Hawthorne family. There's four hot brothers that she's solving the mystery with. Uh, it's it's just fun. It's fun. Yes. 
it is fun. It's a good book. This is screaming like if I was 14 and you asked me what my favorite book was, I'd oh, be like, Inheritance yes. Games. It's super yes. fun. Uh, so much that I know a lot of adults that are like, I love Inheritance Games. So yeah. hopefully we'll be able to dive into the other two in the series this year. Yes. Okay. So my next book I read was The Alchemist. I have had this copy of this book since I was probably 14. And it's funny how books come to us at the right time in our lives, because I think as a high schooler, I would have been like, oh yeah, that's cool. But I think the lessons that the alchemist have, I needed at this point in my life. So this book yeah. came in at the perfect time. Basically this book is kind of talks about the whole idea of grass is always greener on the other side. You're like destiny in life. Like what is destiny? And it, you follow, and it's such a short book. I annotated the crap out of this book. Mm -hmm. It follows uh, this young boy named Santiago who lives this life as a shepherd, but he knows that there's bigger and better things for him out there, and he searches for them. And it's just funny how fate has a way in our lives of making things happen the way it should be, whether that's good or bad. So, as always, the Alchemist is a classic, and I think everyone should read it. You could really read this in one or two days, and I think it has yeah. some great life lessons. And then, of course, the like prose is just beautiful, uh, and it's not that hard to understand. So, yes, this is a 5 out of 5 read for me <laughs> just because of the impact it's had, not only, only on me, but the world. I'm not one yeah. for, like non-fiction self-help books so hearing it mm -hmm. in the form of like a short story in this in this sense of like the length of the book and the yeah. size of the books i read um mm -hmm. this was perfect a little like just refresh of the soul mm -hmm. so yes i definitely recommend the alchemist <laughs> okay this is honestly it's like my baby but it's like my baby's baby oh it's my grandkid that's actually that's it's like, your grandkid exactly. that's this term this is my grandkid um the stolen heir by holly black um if you know if you watch us uh the coral prince is my favorite series of all time i am in love with jude and carden and honestly everyone in the coral prince series um and the stolen heir takes place in the same world this happens uh, 10 years after the main events of the Cool Prince series. Um, and there's new characters uh, and some old faces, familiar faces. It is it is beautiful. I read this in like three days. I just <laughs> consumed it. I love Holly Black's writing. Um, it's just, in, in it's entrancing. Like I really... Holly Black, um, I've heard genetically, like surgically modify her ears to be a point. So they were like fey. And I really think that Holly Black is a fey. Uh, I think the <laughs> surgery is just a fake story because yeah. her books are so entrancing and I just like read them and cry over how beautiful they are and how badass the main characters are. And you'll just be swept away. This is like, this is a journey plot. Uh, I don't wanna talk about the characters because I don't wanna spoil who lives and who dies in the original series uh, because you should read that series first and fall in love with it like I did. Uh, but this is a five out of five book. It is showing characters as they like kind of travel through different parts of Elfheim that we didn't get to see in the original series, which is super cool. I love the world of Faye. I love how she incorporates the modern world into it. And like all of a sudden, they'll be on this like epic fantasy Faye dangerous situation. And there's like a girl taking selfies who got, like got kidnapped, like obsessed. Um, delicious. This book is amazing. Five out of five. Finish the group points and then read this book. Stolen Air. Yeah. Yeah, my cousin Lane was obsessed with that book, and I think he devoured it just like you did. So, so fun. <laughs> I'm very excited to get there. All right. Next book for me is The Fine Prince. Ooh. I started reading a book I have yet to finish, hence why it's not on this list, and <laughs> I was so bored. 
that I needed kind of like Bridgerton. I needed a cleanse. I needed yeah. romance. And I keep on seeing this book because one, I love the cover. And so two, pretty. I see it on book talk all the time. And someone did like a, if you like blah, 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 blah. I was like, sign me up. So I started reading it. Um, yeah, I have a couple thoughts about this book, but the main plot line is, <laughs> I should have looked at the freaking picture on the book. It takes place in like a Disneyland knockoff called Dreamland. Same idea, same everything. So just think of Disney World or Disneyland. It's this man who inherits Disneyland, Dream World is what it's called, from his grandfather. And he's grumpy. It's this whole grumpy sunshine trip yeah. plot line. And he hates everything. And then he meets Zara, who is very talented and joins kind of like an Imagineer role in a, in a sense, which okay. is so funny because I'm like definitely kind of secretly a Disney adult. So I was like, <laughs> I love this, but it was still kind of awkward. But it's yeah. like Disney World, but like add sex. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, it follows kind of like the evolution of Rowan and because he's kind of like a dickhead. And mm-hmm. Zara, who's just a sweet girl who's trying to get by in life. And this first book is their story. And what I learned is there's three in the story and he has brothers. So the next book will be about mm. that brother. It was kind of like Bridgerton in that way where like yeah. each couple kind of gets their own book. So okay. this is like a, a three out of five for me, which I'm sure romance people are going to like come for me. I did enjoy <laughs> it. I read the whole thing. But it was just mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, okay, like, I didn't feel as connected to the characters as I thought yeah. I was going to be. Um, but that's probably because I have my head in the sand fantasy love and nothing will ever <laughs> keep up to that. But I do recommend you read this book. Uh, yeah. It just wasn't, like, my favorite. Mm-hmm. It looks a little beefy for a romance novel. Like, it looks a little Honestly, long. Honestly, it is. It is. I mean, the yeah. words are, like, pretty big, but, like... Okay. What I do like is, this is interesting, I see a lot of people doing this with um, romance books, is they put a playlist in the beginning of the book. Oh, yeah. So you can yeah, kind of like yeah. listen to music. I mean, the book is really, really pretty. Every start of the chapter, they have like this fun. Ooh. It's fun. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to tell people not to read this book because you should, but I'm not like, you need to read it right now. <laughs> Just put it, put it on your TBR and then let me yeah. know what you think of it. <laughs> yeah. Something that you do need to read right now. Peyton is talking to you. I'm talking to everyone, but I'm talking to Peyton. And she knows this. And we've had these conversations. Is the Throne of Glass series. I finished it this year. I read the last one. This is a beefy book. This is the end of Sarah J. Mass's Throne of Glass series. Peyton read The Crescent Cities. We have talked about Akatar so much i am waiting for peyton to read the throne of glass so we can talk about the throne of glass this is the last book um honestly akatar is sarah's most popular series and it is romantic there is you know the biggest focus of those series really are the relationships being developed and i love that and i and i love romantic this is fantasy this is high fantasy i mean there's obviously still like couples and you're gonna love characters sarah is the best person this is the best author for character that i feel like i have read like you just fall in love with all of her characters you're going to fall in love with everyone i cannot say anything about this book because it is the last in an eight book series and there's so much going on but throne of glass is where you need to start it is magnificent. It starts like as a YA series and everything feels like the first Throne of Glass is like a Cinderella retelling. Loosely, loosely. Um, but like you think that Throne of Glass, the first one, is very like YA and childish and like kind of like nostalgic in like a Harry Potter way. Yeah. Um, but then you get later in the series and you realize, oh no, 
Miss Sarah J. Mass was laying the groundwork. Like everything that you thought was just like silly, like offhanded comments, like a fun joy ride in front of glass, you later realize mattered so much. And she was plan she planned the reveals. Queen of Shadows in this series is my favorite. It is so good. They're some of my favorite characters ever are in this series. Uh, it's a must read. Any Sarah J. Mass is a, probably a must read. She does it amazing. There's such good characters in this. Okay, read it. Sarah Sarah is the queen at characters. So yes, whenever you read one of her books, it's like okay, let's get into these <laughs> characters. All right, I'm in love. Okay, so we just did a podcast about this, so I don't want to go into it too much because the podcast was awesome and we got in a really cool conversation about this book but i just recently read cruel prince and by holly black so and aubrey I just finished the last of what the she most had recent out yeah yeah the most recent um so yeah cruel prince follows your main character and our anti-hero legend jude dwart who is thrust into this world of elfheim mm. and we get kind of she's human by the way so this is crazy um yeah so all i'm gonna say is go watch that podcast because we do have a non-spoiler yes. section mm -hmm. um this book for me i did say was like a 4.5 out of 5 only because i feel like the next book i'm just going to love so i yeah. think this will become a 5 out of 5 for me but just for now i'm playing the book critic role and saying like, okay, I see the breadcrumbs. Let's see where this goes. So yes, yeah. love this book. Highly recommend. Like <laughs> fine print. I was like, I recommend you read this. No, I highly recommend you jump on the Crow Prince bandwagon with us and follow us through my, technically my journey of reading these books. <laughs> yeah. And see Aubrey's excitement every time we talk about Jude and Cardin. So, yes, definitely read this. I had so much fun reading this book. Read it in, like, a week. So, yeah. there's that. You're going to love it. Super digestible. Super digestible. Great fantasy book. All right. The last book, which is the most current book that both Peyton and I have finished, that we devoured, we just did a podcast about this last week, is the fourth wing if you have not gotten your hands on this book yet hopefully they will be printed soon or download it on your kindle because you need to read this book you need to read this book this is going to be best book of the year for both of us i already know we're only at the mid-year review but catch us in december saying the same thing okay amazing peyton yeah. i know you're obsessed yeah guys i it's been a, since Akatar, like a court of mist and fury. It has been a while yeah. since I've been like, okay, is this my favorite book? Like you really that when you like seal your identity as like this is my favorite book, and then something yeah. like this comes along, you're like, am I switching? Um, am I? I don't know yet, but yeah, this story <laughs> follows our main character Violet, who grew up kind of like a book nerdy nerd like us yeah. but her mother mm -hmm. is the general of this large army there's been war yes. going on for like hundreds of years and when you turn 20 years old you have to make a choice kind of like divergent style where you have to join yeah. one of these quadrants there's the healing mm -hmm. quadrant the scribe quadrant the infantry quadrant and then the writer's quadrant which if you can see they are dragons so Violet's basically forced into the writer's quadrant. She goes on this grand adventure of violence and you, which you will get if you read the book and just, you know, death is always just like right here in her face. Um, yes, crazy epic story. We devoured this book. This is a five out of five. We yes. could give this 10 stars. We would, we absolutely <laughs> love this book. This, if you, take one thing away from this video you need to read this book as yes. soon as possible yes our episode came out before this podcast talking and diving into this book if you want a little bit more of a non-spoiler review mm -hmm. 
go look at that. And then if you want all the spoilers, we have that too for you. So yes, yes read Fourth Wing. So, so obsessed. This is like your adult fantasy version of Divergent. Uh, it's it's beautiful. It's the most fastest paced book you'll ever read in your life. Every single page you're like, oh, this is a new crazy thing happening. You need to read it. We're convincing everyone in our lives to read it. And now you do. All right. That is all we have time Woo! for today. Did you read any of these books? We are getting an arm workout as we just all this knowledge in our hands what have you read what would you like us to review next and also let us know we should put on our tbr for the rest of the year yes okay thank you guys all so much for joining us and happy reading